Well, Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. I am outside of a town called Bisbee, Arizona. I uh, just wanted to share with you a couple morning routines. Um, well, can't really tell, but I cleaned up. Well, except for the bed. But I put this away, this being the portable propane grill, cleaned up, and I was thinking to myself, man, I'm only about an hour away from Tucson. I gotta stop there and get a couple packages. Uh, I was, and I was looking on a couple apps. Let me show you the apps. Okay, so first obvious one is Google Maps. And spoiler alert, I found a new cool place to go, and it was on default mode. And I saw this big old green area. Green is like a park. And then I zoomed in, and it's Coronado, Coronado National Monument. So, see how it says it like, whoops, there we go. See how it says it right there? So I just clicked on that, and then the reviews popped up. And so I decided today I'm going to do that. Now, let's back up a little bit. The other app I opened was uh, Boondocking. And boondocking is a phrase for camping without services. And so here I am, and there's nothing really too close. All right, let's go to the other map. Well, the other one was Gas Buddy. I need gas, and I like to pay the cheapest price I can, so I noticed that the gas was cheap over here. And that's kind of past where I want to go, which, again, is the Coronado National Memorial. Also, I was on Roadside America, and I just pressed this little arrow, and I noticed there wasn't really a lot of stuff I wanted to see. I've been to Shady Dell before, and I've been to Bisbee before. All these are Bisbee. However, I haven't been to the Mine Tour, which looks cool, but I don't like paying for stuff because I am on a budget. And I've been to Tombstone before last year, and some other places. Um... Okay, so the point of what I was saying is that, oh, and that's uh, Naco. That's a, a border town, uh, Mexico, U.S. So the point of what I was saying was this. I almost thought today was going to be a do-nothing day. <laughs> but if you do just a, even a couple minutes research, or if you search on Instagram... Uh, it, like Travel Arizona or Explore Arizona or those aren't even sites, by the way. But if you if you look for the hashtags or locations or um, state specific uh, accounts which feature other people, that's a really great way to find out things to do. Because a lot of people in the comments have been impressed. Thank you. Uh, that I found so many interesting things to do in kind of the middle of nowhere and I just wanted to share a couple little tips and tricks also a very good app for this as well is actually Wikipedia um, and you can go on Wikipedia and we'll do it together I'm just pulling it up right now uh, you can go to Wikipedia open the app and then you go to places right here at the bottom. And it's not always the best app, but if you if you you know, if you play with several different apps, there's a way to find out, oh wow, there's something called the Bisbee Massacre. There's a way to find out interesting stuff that's nearby. Um so this goes on into the Bisbee Massacre. If anybody's curious, obviously you can look that up. So I just want to share that with you because I love you guys and I want you to all have awesome adventures and I want everyone to be able to find cool stuff so that they too can do what I do. Uh, so if this is at all helpful, give it a thumbs up. <laughs> um, and anyways, we're going to start our day right now and we're going to go get some diesel.
news, guys. I'm going to use these uh, gift cards here at the Fred Meyer, which uh, somebody kindly gave me at the Voodoo Donuts uh, meetup. And I met a viewer. Hey. You want to see your channel? My name is Wingglide Angel Dragon from YouTube. Sweet. Very nice to meet you, man. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm going to head out to the Coronado Mountains. What should I check out out there? Uh, they have the Coronado Cave up there. They got the Ramsey Canyon Pass. Uh-huh. And Car Canyon thing, it's like riding down a roller coaster from the Car Canyon here. <laughs> oh, cool. Sweet. Sweet. I'll always uh, ask a lo local for the best advice. Uh, I gotta get some supplies in here. We'll see you guys in a sec. All right, so I gotta say that these things actually work. I just saved 30 cents a gallon. It is uh, 265 regularly. I've been using Musso's uh, phone number for this. Uh, he's a, a woodworker who helped me with this. Um, Thanks, dude. <laughs> but I've also been using his number at the grocery store, too, so I feel like uh, I kind of deserve part of that 30 cents. Great thing I stopped into the visitor center for a couple reasons. Uh, number one, they're incredibly nice, and um, <laughs> you should just go in and say hi to your local peeps um, and ask questions because one of the questions I wanted to know is um, this is a park and by the way national parks you cannot uh, boondock which is park for free you have to pay uh, overnight um, this particular park closes at sunset uh, we are right on the Mexican border US Mexico border um, also there are surrounding uh, around here national forest area and I can stay on National Forest land for free overnight for up to 14 days. Another cool thing, I got some more postcards. I will announce that in another video. I just didn't want to bump them up so close to each other. So make sure you're subscribed, turn that notification on. Um, also, being in the desert, well, you can't see from there. <laughs> being in the desert, water is super important. So they said, if you don't have enough water, we have uh, water out of the hose that you can drink um, and so with that water I'm gonna fill up the shower because it is I would say a quarter tank full still quite a bit of water but um, we are in the desert you might be able to tell from my throat I'm a little parched even though I have been drinking water so that being said what a great way to spend my New Year's Eve then boondocking right on the U.S.-Mexico border. Oh, most important thing um, about stopping in the visitor center, the nice lady inside had a map of the area and suggested I take a picture of it, in which I did. But then I suggested to her what you can do is you can download an offline map. And let me show you guys how to do that. So, let me just X out of here. If you hit these top three bars in Google Maps, then you can go to offline maps and then hit custom map and then you can pull this around any which way you want to and then you can download the whole map so before keyword before you get into a national park download the map because you can only download it when you have service a lot of times these parks uh, you won't have any service in the Wi-Fi if they even ha have it, will be slow as a snail. And just to show you guys how this works, I'm gonna turn this on airplane mode, which turns off everything. Then I'm gonna zoom in on the map area, which I already downloaded, and we're gonna get driving directions to a lake 18 miles away. Now, this is a campground. I'm not gonna stay at a campground because I'm gonna have to pay, but watch. Offline, no data, no traffic data, no cell service data. Continue straight. Boom, it works. We got fresh filtered water with this nice little hove coming off the spigot over here. So thanks again, guys. Um, looks like I maxed out the length of this uh, <laughs> RV hose. So it would be handy to have one twice as long just in case it was a little bit further away.
are now at Montezuma Pass. Elevation 6575. I want to show you what we just drove up here. I know in the magic world of uh, YouTube, a few seconds are actually hours. So check this out. Went up all these crazy little roads, little hairpin right there, and out there, you see that line that goes from right to center is the US. Mexico border. Um, so, there is a road, dirt road, that goes 18 miles. I think I just did three of it, so another 15 miles. Because over here is a Coronado National Forest. Like we said, I can stay overnight there for free. So, I can take it 50 miles all the way to Nogales or I can take it another 15 miles to the lake. I see a couple cars right there. 15 miles up to the lake, or all oh, this is fair game. So, I think, I think we're gonna head that way. And I think we're gonna do some boondocking out there. And I think we're gonna be in the middle of nowhere at the start of the new year, which you guys are gonna see it like a week after. But for me, Today is New Year's Eve, tomorrow is New Year's Day. That's gonna be pretty exciting stuff. Um, the clouds aren't really cooperating for nighttime photography. And it's gonna be freezing, and I haven't really done a lot of it because the weather's been pretty cold. But there's a chance that this all could blow over. I don't really know. Uh, all I know is that this is absolutely beautiful. I had no idea that the U.S.-Mexico border look like this. It's so pretty down here. Hello, dear. How are you? Where are you going? Why do you have something in your mouth? Where did you go? That is a steep hill. Another refresher about where to park or how to park overnight in a national park. Uh, sorry, National Forest. You see this? Road. Right here? Side of the road. Totally okay for overnight parking, especially if you have a larger vehicle. You don't want to get stuck someplace uh, where the road is bad, so just pulling off to the side, you're A-OK -okay overnight. Even close to the Mexico border, the only thing that could possibly happen to me tonight is that Border Patrol agents come by, knock on the bus, and just kind of ask who I am which is totally fine with me. I got absolutely nothing to hide. I am aware of people who are gonna say things like, oh, you gotta watch out for the drug cartels or whatever, and etc." I know that is a part of life down here, but when is the last time you heard about someone getting killed or murdered or held hostage on the US side? It is not something that is even in my thoughts whatsoever. I've traveled extensively from Tijuana down to Guatemala, all by backpacks, by myself, with public transportation. And the only thing that happened to me is I had an amazing time. So don't be afraid, don't listen to the news. They're mostly just fear-mongering you just for uh, clicks and views and uh, for you to watch their, uh, their advertisements on their commercials, honestly. Oh yeah! This is what I'm talking about! I am on National Forest land in Arizona. I can't hear a single thing. Uh, just for reference, let me zoom in. That is where I got to the peak, Montezuma's Peak. I think that's called Montezuma's Revenge? No, pass. You know what I'm talking about. I'm out in nature. I'm right next to Mexico. I saw some deers already. Shoot, maybe I'll see more. Maybe I'll see some javelinas. Um, <laughs> had a very nice conversation with the uh, forestry patrol guy out here. Badge, gun, you know, that kind of stuff. And uh, he, he definitely let me know that <laughs> there is stuff going on out here. And um, But that being said, if you're not in the way of people, uh, say like traffickers or 
people like that. Um, it's really just a good time out here. Um, but yeah, there are some bad dudes who come across the border <laughs> with drugs and guns and all kinds of stuff. But if you're out here, you know, there's a bunch of hunters, there's a bunch of campers, hikers. If you're one of those people, the chance of something happening is very, very slim. I'm out here all by myself. I'm not even worried about it because, well, I don't know. I'm just having a good time. There's a lot of other things you can worry about, and I'm not really going to worry about having a good time. Um, also, for reference, this is the uh, main little road. There are tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of dispersed camping, boondocking as I call it, all around this neighborhood, uh, neighborhood area. I just happened to pull over here because it looked fairly flat. There's a nice little meadow, and I got this nice view of the mountains here. So, yeah, in a little bit, I'm gonna do a time lapse and I'm gonna cook up that two pound steak that I got at the grocery store. So, life is beautiful. You know, just got to get out and explore a little bit. All right, as you guys know, I've been doing the little thing quite often. I got myself a nice steak for uh, New Year's Eve. However, <laughs> There's a good chance I might run out of propane. Uh, that's my last bottle of propane. And I have no more. And uh, I didn't realize that that was my last bottle. So, let's cross our fingers that we can uh, cook this whole steak up. Uh, otherwise, might be a peanut butter and jelly kind of night. Minus the jelly. I just pulled some real MacGyver stuff uh, <laughs> right now. I took my uh, very sharp, I don't even know what to call this, knife, tactical, tactical knife. And so I made little uh, pieces of the steak. I increased the surface area as well as decreased the amount of heat retained in the meat. It sounds very scientific, but really, I just made them smaller pieces to cook, and uh, I think life is going to be good. Uh, also, I put a bunch of oil in here to uh, heat it up a little bit faster, and as you can see, this looks like a meal! Yoo-hoo! Got steak on New Year's Eve! I'm so excited! Oh my god! I was paying so much attention to... Uh, dinner, I didn't even realize the magic that was happening right behind my very own eyes. Isn't that amazing? That is so cool. Holy crap! Did I say it was a two pound steak? It wasn't 1.84, it was 1.34. Holy crap! A pound and a third. Oh, oh my god. That was a lot of meat. Oh my goodness. I'm not going to make this a regular thing. That was just a special occasion. Happy New Year to me. Uh, but uh, now it's time for some veggies. And actually, I learned that these, these vegetables here are 60, no, 50 cents cheaper than Walmart, I think. Awesome. This is so awesome.